Michael Varanian. I'm with uh, Johns Hopkins Hospital uh, Department of Medicine, uh, and I did a, uh, a poster on the interaction of fitness, obesity, and cardiometabolic risk. So we took roughly 2,600 uh, Brazilian people um, from Sao Paulo, and uh, they were uh, sent for an employee-sponsored health exam that include, um, included blood work, included an ultrasound for hepatic steatosis, and included an Elastat treadmill uh, stress test. Um, so we wanted to look at how cardiometabolic risk and how uh, fitness interacted. Some of the outcome data have shown that basically those who are fit yet fat have lower all-cause and lower cardiovascular mortality than those who are thin yet unfit. And so we wanted to see how um, the cardiometabolic risk panels that people would order in a normal uh, in a normal clinic uh, compare to what we see as the outcome data. Essentially, is fitness protective? So at first, we looked at cardiometabolic risk uh, in those who were obese and overweight, and we saw that as people uh, got to higher levels on the Elastat stress test, essentially those with higher fitness had lower cardiometabolic risk. CRP, glucose, systolic blood pressure, LDL, HDL, metabolic syndrome, steatosis, and triglyceride to HDL ratio were all statistically significant, showing that of those who were overweight and obese, those who were more fit had lower cardiometabolic risk. Then we took just a fit population. So of those who were fit, we wanted to see if we put them into BMI quartiles, uh, essentially of those who were fit, uh, if we stratify them based on um, fatness, per se, uh, if the cardiometabolic risk got worse. And we saw that as people were fatter, yes, they, it, it did get worse. So basically, again, everything that we talked about in the, in the first table was statistically significant. CRP, glucose, systolic and diastolic blood pressure. LDL, metabolic syndrome, steatosis, uh, and we also included Framingham risk in this. Finally, we wanted to look at the discordant pairs. So those who are fit and fat compared to those who are thin but not fit. And in doing that, we wanted to see whether fitness was protective or whether it was fatness that was driving cardiometabolic risk. And what we did find for, again, all of those, uh, those things that we measured is that fatness actually was driving it. So, when we look at the long-term outcome data, we see that fitness is protected. But in the things that we would measure normally in a clinic, uh, the metabolic panels, you know, the CRP, the glucose, systolic blood pressure, even hepatic steatosis and meta metabolic syndrome, all of those things are worse in those who are fat yet fit compared to those who are unfit yet fat. So it raises the question, um, since the mortality data show that um, those people who are um, fit and fat are protected compared to those who are unfit and fat, do we need to start measuring fitness? Because in the cross-sectional data that we have here, uh, we see that uh, fatness is the main determinant of cardiometabolic risk.